I was introduced to Freire as a student in the late 80s. The Department of Education in India had introduced a path-breaking feminist program cooked up by the wonderful Srilata Bhatliwala and other Indian feminists. Inspired by the Freirean idea of conscientization and the Gramscian notion of subalternity, the program sought to remedy the historical neglect of women from mass education, especially those women who bear the brunt of caste and religious discrimination in society. The Mahila Samakya program, as it was called, envisioned the Sangha or the Women's Collective as the central infrastructure for critical pedagogy. The Sangha, as the Frerian cultural circle, was women's own space for critical thinking. Mahila Samakya was a perfect case of indigenization of an idea with universal applicability, with far-reaching impact. The 2001 Census of India reflected the high enrollment of girls over the previous decade, attributing the shift to the unequivocal role of the Sangha women who dared to dream better for their daughters. Much later, through my organization, IT for Change, we began a small-scale experiment with Sangha women in Mysuru district, a project that we continue to work on. In keeping with the spirit of the Mahila Samakya program, we brought in digital technologies into the Sangha ecosystem. Our intent was to facilitate, through a fork in the road for critical pedagogies of the Sangha, a new language of critique. With a repertoire of information, knowledge, and communication strategies, Dalit women in their native dialects stormed the Brahmanical public sphere, taking over public radio airwaves through the Kelu Sakhi program, boldly curated, archived, and disseminated their stories on video clips, set up information centers that have grown into vanguard local institutions, thus building Sangha managed systems to renegotiate political power. Our work in Mysuru has grown since then with a clear intergenerational footprint as granddaughters of Sangha women have become feminist digital curators. Our experiments with conscientization also extends to teacher communities and urban youth in situations of poverty and marginality. As the elite outsiders in the process, our role has been to create an interstice, a liminal space between lived reality on the one hand and curiosity, reflection, faith, and hope on the other through multiple critical literacies. This, in Frarian terms, may be seen as the space of epistemological knowing, a space that we strive to deepen also for ourselves as facilitators in fashioning our praxis and engaging with local to global processes of institutional and policy change. Digitality locked within the imperialist economic paradigm produces through its platform publics a narcissistic self. Networked individualism is based on a fragile subjectivity that is in perpetual search of belonging. A sociality subsumed within capitalist platforms means, like Freire's peasants, we are all alienated from our own authentic agency. The hope to attain a humane potential is entrapped in a banking method of public engagement, a colonizing culture of datafied interactions that anchor our choice and destiny in the circuits of digital capitalism. The network is ruthless. Its anti-dialogic ephemerality dehumanizes social interaction, and the datafied individual is but an ever-multiplying object in an expanding commodity market of diversity. This is the self in a post-social digitality, excavated of reflection, empathy, and humility. There is then the mob that thrives on the algorithmic sorting apparatus scaffolding the online publics, assuming an invulnerability antithetical to a dialogic public. The mob delegitimizes experiences of oppression, creating vehement fictions, erasing any vestige of voice from the margins. The mob polarizes and dehumanizes the space of the public arrogantly and relentlessly. It engenders a culture of violence that silences the outgroup 
which includes those who seek to assemble a memory that is different from the mob's hegemonic truth, feeding outrage into the network and feeding off of the network's mind-numbing virality, the mob flattens public discourse into virulent singular, singular narratives, each of which systematically disarticulates the outgroup's claims. The network as the self's other is an antithesis of the safe Freudian space of epistemological distance, where there are no themes or values of which one cannot speak, no areas in which one must be silent. Its mobs do not tolerate the testimonies of those who seek to reclaim their place in the world. Its memory is but a patchwork of quantified presence and fabricated truths. The mob is a far cry from the multiple Freirian thinking subjects. And in the mob's truth, there is simply no room for any humility. Like the mathematical systems of virality that sustain it, oppression in the times of digital media is fractal. Its spatio-temporal dimensions invade the deeply private spaces, even the soul of the oppressed. Freire writes about how the oppressed find in the oppressor their model of manhood or their model of humanity, of what it means to be a free person. The aura of AI dichotomizes the world, dividing the intelligent economies from those that must play catch up. Like the peasants who thought that to be free meant aspiring to be like their oppressive landlords. Societies eager to embrace the digital seem to claim their digital futures in the image of the very same hegemonic model that unabashedly plays with their destinies, encoding, engulfing, and enslaving planet and people for profit. The power to control the soul of society is a heady one. Jeff Bezos never wanted to sell books. He always wanted to sell everything. Arrogant entrepreneurialism overvalorized as innovation so that capitalism can move fast and break things has ossified non-humility as the base structure of the network. Faith and hope are no longer human. Trust is a blockchain-based techno artifact and wisdom, the random improbabilities of machine learning models. The structures of digital capitalism normalize a social violence that cripples the very ability to imagine different digital futures. They condemn democracy to a delusional grandeur in which humility has no value. As Freire believed, the naming of the world through which people constantly recreate that world cannot be an act of arrogance. The social movements of the decade coinciding with the digital age from the student movements in South Africa, India, and Chile, the Me Too movement led by ordinary women around the world, and the clear voices of Black Lives Matter and the Muslim women of Shaheen Bagh all show a deep failure of current institutions. Unless the violence of the current system is recognized, unless the institutions of democracy can reshape the culture of public reasoning, adopting a pluralistic sensibility that Freire spoke of, Unless institutions can reinvent themselves through humility and dialogue, democracy will be lost to digital fundamentalism. Freire's pedagogy of the heart also reminds us that to be humble is to acknowledge that emotions are central to the process of conscientization. This goes right into the core of our institutional systems, our governments, universities, schools, scientific establishments and how they can program for a new digitality grounded in the non-dualism that Freire advocated, how institutional cultures can ignite the emergence of a liberated society that does not dichotomize thinking and feeling, human and non-human, physical and virtual. As we celebrate Paolo Freire, we do need to contemplate what might it mean to become human in a digitally connected reality that is itself alive and what it will take as a society to bring that privilege to all. <laughs>